All right, grade eight, we are moving right along here in chapter four. This is the second part of lesson 4.4. And today what we're gonna be focusing on is graphing the linear equation, identify the x-intercept. Now, not actually gonna be demonstrating any graphing today. Uh, if you have any questions about graphing, you can review at 4.4a or back earlier in chapter four videos uh, for lessons on Reminders how to graph an equation. You are going to graph for the assignment, but I'm not going to demonstrate that again in this video. I want the focus to be on this idea, identifying the x-intercept, which is something new. We've talked quite a bit about the y-intercept, which is where the line crosses the y-axis, but we haven't talked too much about the x-intercept, where which is where the line crosses the x-axis. But first... Let's just get into our directions here. Graph the linear equation, identify the x-intercept. Well, first of all, when we graph it, we wanna make sure that it's in slope-intercept form. Now, we've talked about slope-intercept form. This equation here is nothing new. Y equals mx plus b. M is the slope. B is the y-intercept, which is where the line crosses the y-axis. And at the y-intercept, as you know, since it's right on the y-axis, the one that goes up and down, the x is zero. Because here, if we have our coordinate plane, this is that point of origin, that zero, zero, that we talk of, talked about uh, back in 4.3 on proportional relationships. x is gonna be zero, because it's not left or right. x is zero for the y-intercept. And so we're gonna kind of talk a little bit about the x-intercept, which means that y will be zero because it's not any up or down, it's right on the x-intercept. But anyway, let's, uh, first of all, we're gonna graph the linear equation. Your first step is gonna be to put it in slope-intercept form. Well, this one is already in slope-intercept form. That y equals mx plus b slope-intercept form, that one's already there. So we aren't going to have to rewrite it in slope-intercept form. Then you're going to have to graph it. Now this one, we're not going to graph it, but you can see that it has a y-intercept of 7, positive 7. The slope is 1 because there's nothing uh, in front of the x. So we understand that's a 1. So that's going to be up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. And it's going to be rising from left to right because it's a positive slope. So... The next step is going to be to identify the x-intercept. Now, like we said, the x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis, which means that y is zero because it's not up here, it's not down here, it's right on the x-axis, which means that y is zero. So if I wanna figure out what the x-intercept is or what x is, I simply make y zero, which means that I can rewrite this as zero equals x plus 7, which means that I'm going to solve for x, so I would need to isolate x, which means I'm just going to subtract 7 from both sides. I'm going to make that 0. I'm going to come over here, 0 minus 7. Well, that's negative 7. Negative 7 equals x. My x-intercept for this line is negative 7. If we go to this second one, y minus 3x equals 27. Well, first of all, I need to graph it, which means I need to get it in slope-intercept form, okay? This is not in slope-intercept form. So to isolate y, I'm going to add 3x to both sides. That's going to give me 0. I'm going to come over here and add 3x. We've been doing this long enough now, though, that we should be at the point now where we can just automatically put it in slope-intercept form there's nothing here, so I'm going to end up with a positive 3x plus 27. Now it's in slope-intercept form. y equals 3x plus 27. Now remember, though, what I'm doing. I would graph this now. My y-intercept would be a positive 27. I would have a positive slope of 3. So I'd be going up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. It'd be rising left to right because it's a positive slope, but I'm not graphing it on this video. You will have to graph it on your assignment 
We will graph in class when we do them together. But for the purpose of this video, I'm not doing any graphing. Like I said, you can refer back to the videos back earlier in chapter four if you need a reminder on graphing. But here's your y-intercept. There's your slope. But I do want to focus on finding the x-intercept. And remember, since the x-intercept is right on the x-axis, it's not up or down, y is zero, which means that I can rewrite this as zero equals 3x plus 27. Instead of y equals 3x plus 27, y is going to be zero, which equals 3x plus 27. When it's the x-intercept, you make y zero. But now I need to isolate x, and I need to isolate x by subtracting 27 from both sides. That gives me 0. I do 0 minus 27. That gives me a negative 27. Negative 27 equals 3x. If negative 27 equals 3x, then I'm doing negative 27 divided by 3. Well, negative 7 divided by 3 means that x equals negative nine. All right, last one. Y plus 12 equals negative 4x. Y plus 12 equals negative 4x. Well, to graph it first, I need to put it in slope intercept form, which means I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. That gives me zero. That leaves me with y equals negative 4x minus 12, because I'm subtracting 12 from both sides. And there's nothing here to go with the 12, so it's 0 minus 12. It's just minus 12. I'm not going to graph it, but I can see that my y-intercept would be negative 12. I would have a negative slope. So my line would be falling from left to right, down 4 over 1, down 4 over 1, a slope of negative 4. Once again, if you need reminders on how to graph, go to a video earlier from Chapter 4. But now I want to make the, the x-intercept. I want to find the x-intercept. One more reminder. The x-intercept means it's where the line crosses the x-axis. It's not up or down on the y-axis. It's right there on the x-axis, which means that y equals 0. When I want to know the x-intercept, I make y 0. 0 equals negative 4x minus 12. I need to isolate the negative 4x. I'm going to do that by adding 12. That gives me 0. 0 plus 12 equals 12. I am left with then 12 equals negative 4x. So I can come over here. 12 equals negative 4x. Okay. Uh, so I take 12. I'm going to divide it by negative 4. That's negative 3. Negative 3 equals x. Your x-intercept is negative 3 or 0, negative 3. That's your x-intercept. All right? That's what you're going to be doing on today's assignment, Lesson 4.4b. Talk to you later, 8th grade. Bye.